Hi, I'm Bonnie Lynn Linke, an independent Stamping Up demonstrator, and welcome to my studio, Stamping with Bonnie Lynn. Today, I am going to show you how I made this card here. It is, I call it, the Peace to You Marius Frames card. And um, that's the two main things that I used in this, was the Peace to You stamp set, which is right here. And then the other important thing was, let me grab it from the stack over here. This is the Marius Frames Hybrid Embossing Folder. And the reason why it's a hybrid, this is a beautiful embossing folder just on its own. But the reason why it's a hybrid is because it works with these die frames right here. Oh, excuse me. And this is held over from last year. They brought it back this year. So some of you may already have this. And the piece that I used from here, well, actually two pieces are these two right here. And the first thing I did is I took this die frame here and I put it on a piece of the brush metallic foils they call it the brush metallic card stocks. So I put this on here and this is four and a quarter by five and a half. And you need to be generous on your four and a quarter. In my directions, I decided today, I'm gonna actually change it to four and three eighths just so people don't cut it short. This one is real close. But what you do is you put the frame on here and you run it through your cut and emboss machine, your big, your big shot, whatever you have. Now, if you don't have one yet, I highly recommend the cut and, em and emboss machine. You get some great plates with it, and I find that it cuts the fine details on the Stampin' Up! dies better than what the Big Shot does. But that's my own preference. I have them both because I still use the Big Shot in some of my classes. So, okay, so we cut this, and what we get is this right here. And I want to show you how tight this is on four and a quarter. So there's not much, it's just hanging together at each end. So you have to make sure it's a generous, I don't mean four and a quarter, I mean five and a half. Um, make sure it's a generous five and a half. You should maybe go five and five eighths. So, and this is what you come out with. And it doesn't matter which way because you'll notice on your brush metallic um, gold cardstock, the foils, that there are lines that run through this piece of foil. And they, you can see them right through here. And it doesn't matter which way you cut your die cut, whether they're going sideways or up and down. I've done it both ways. And because this is such fine details and we are going to emboss it, it doesn't matter. So once you cut this out, I'll take that out of the way. You're going to want to put this now into your embossing folder. And you're just going to take your time, line it up, make sure it's on. And <laughs> that's the first time this has happened. It's gone on pretty much perfectly when I laid it there. So hold it and close this. And now you're going to want to run this through your cut and emboss machine. And the way that you plate this is that you use number one, which is that piece of paper out of there. This is your platform one. So you place your embossing folder right there, and then you take plate four, which is the gray one, and you run it through your embossing machine, and you come out with this right here. Isn't this gorgeous? Um, I just love it. I love the change that they made to their foils with the brush metallic look. And I love this embossing folder. The detail is fantastic. Then after you do that, you want to take a piece of plain 
cardstock. We are using Blueberry Bliss for this card, and this is four and a quarter by five and a half because we want it to be the full size. And you're going to want to center this on here. Now, I chose to use this embossing folder for my background, but if you wanted to choose a different one, you can. It's just, to me, these little pieces around here, they look like stars, and it worked. Okay, and the way to know if you have it pretty much, you can either, you can measure it from the edge of your paper to right here and make sure it's even on both, but you want to have about an eighth of an inch below this black line on the front of the embossing folder. And that means it's pretty well centered. And then this way, you wanna make sure that the distance from like here is pretty much about the same it is here. And then you run that through your cut and emboss machine. You're getting lots of use out of this folder in your cut and emboss machine. And then you're going to come out with this piece right here. Isn't this beautiful? I just love it. And for me, I want it where I had the leaves on this side for the top. And I want to put this piece on here like so. So what we're going to do next is we are going to take a little bit of glue. See, so far so easy, easy right? It really is. And my idea for this card came from the fact that I wanted to use the church from the Peace to You set. But I am, um, you know, I've seen what everybody else has been doing. And they're beautiful cards, don't get me wrong, because I've already done one like that, more than one like that. And, um, and I love it, but I just wanted something different than what I've seen. And I thought, well, why not where we could cut the church out and it have it as the center of attention? And so that's how I came up with this design. So I'm going to take this now. I put glue, liquid glue, on the back of my foil in this square. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up with the embossing on my paper. And that's why I tell you to try to center this Blackberry Bliss when you emboss it because you want this to pretty much be in the middle. And by using this same embossing folder, this frame just sits down over where the one is in your paper. And by using glue, you have a little bit of time in case you need to make any movement, little movement changes. Gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. So next, you want to take your card base, which is also Blackberry Bliss. It's eight and a half inches by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then you fold that in half and burnish it on your score line. Love the paper trimmer because it makes it so easy to cut and score all in one. Okay, and now we're just going to take this and we're going to tape this. And I've already put tape on the back of my emboss. You could glue it if you want to. I don't like to. Um, as you guys know that follow me, I'm not a big fan of using liquid glue only when I need to. So I'm going to take my, take your pick tool and I'm going to take off that piece of tape. Actually, the way I did this, let's see if I can get this off again. The way I did this to get it nice and even, I just laid them, put them both down flat on my surface, lined up my side edges, and then pushed it. So now I need to remove the tape on this side here. Hold that down. And 
do the remove the other two sides. This take your pick tool is so handy for getting the paper off of the two sided tape like that, the tear and tape. And there we have that all done. So next what we're gonna do is we are gonna stamp our white card stock with the church stamp. And I have it set up on my Stamparatus already. And nothing special about the way I set it up. I just, um, because I've made like 18 of these cards, I needed some for a card swap. And I also, I really love the stamp set. It is probably my favorite stamp set out of the catalog. Um, mainly because of my faith. To me, Christmas is all about Jesus, the birth of Christ. So I love the stamp set. So um, I've made lots of them. And by the time I'm all done, I'll probably make about 20 of these. And they'll be about a quarter of my cards for Christmas. Okay. So I have my Stamparatus all set up. And the way I did it is I'll take this off because it's not set in any certain spot. I just um, went and put my paper down and I then put the magnet, hold it in place. Then I put the stamp on, fold that over so it will stick to there. Now I have one of the old stamp pads from my Blackberry Bliss and just haven't gotten the new one yet. I need to do that because this one is well used, well loved, let's say that. Okay, I like using the Stamparatus where I have a lot of stamping here, a heavy area, and also I'm going dark. So when you're going dark, if you don't get good coverage, it will be real noticeable. And I use the palm of my hand. I have um, arthritis in my fingers. So the using the palm of my hand is the easiest way. Now this is real weak on ink right there. So I am gonna go on and do it this way. Now, if I wasn't using um, the Stamparatus, I would have to settle for that. And that's fine because the color of it is beautiful. It's just, weaker than what I like it. Okay, now when I open this up, it's gonna be very dark. When it dries, it will dry lighter, but this ink is wet and it's pretty well saturated. I'm gonna close this and rub where I left some ink on the stamp right there. Even though it's not in my picture, it's less I gotta wipe off. Okay. That is good. So I'm going to take this off because I don't want to close it on there and have it on my scratch pad. So I'm just going to step that aside until I clean it off. Okay. And I recommend that you probably stamp this first. That way it gives the ink a few minutes to dry. And... Um, You'll also see that it's light in color. And what I did is, remember I took this rectangular piece, I had it sitting, it came with this the dies and it was sitting inside here. Well, this is the piece we wanna use to cut out our church, because it will fit in the square. And what I did is I decided what I wanted to cut out. Now, if you want that big tree, you can move it over this way to cut it. I did do that on one of my cards, but I decided, well, not me. My husband said that he didn't like the way that this tree only showed right there. So he asked me to keep them both in. So I cut mine that way there. And I have already stamped one and cut it. I ran it through my embossed machine and cut it out already. So it's right here. And what we're gonna do next, I'm bringing my card base back in here. And let me find my dimensionals. Here they are. I am going to take and put dimensionals on the back of my church. And 
and I use five, one in each corner and one in the middle. Bring in my little trash can. Yes. I'm a messy stamper. I'd really like to show you guys my craft room, but right now it is such a mess. Um, <laughs> it really is. I am doing some craft sales this season, and I've been busy making stuff, and I haven't been cleaning up the way I normally do. So I just center this on the frame and put it down. And there we go. I got ink on my fingers. Let me try to get that off because I don't want to get it on my white cardstock for the card inside. Now, I thought about adding some bling, but I don't know. I kind of like the simplicity of this. I think the um, gold is just beautiful enough that I didn't add any. Uh, if you think I should, please leave a comment and tell me I should and what bling I should add to it. I would like to see that. And um, if anybody does and I decide to do it, I'll post a picture on the website with this card. And you will find this card, directions to this card, all the written directions are located in where it has the details for the video right underneath the video. There will be a link there to my webpage with this card on it. And I do have directions you can print out. For my greeting, I used the one from the same stamp set, the Peace to You. It's right here. It says Peace to You at Christmas. And I heat embossed it in gold. And if you don't know how to heat emboss, I will be posting a video sometime in the next, um, hopefully next couple, three weeks on how to do heat embossing or else you can Google it for YouTube and it will show you. But you just um, use your bossing and buddy to wrap the paper where you're gonna stamp. And then you stamp with Versamark and then you put your embossing powder, which is gold here. You pour that on there and then you hit the back, get off the loose pieces. And I usually will dip mine in a second time just to get a more um, thicker look to the, to the words and then hit the back again. And then you take your heat tool and you heat it up until it melts. And then what I did then is I used the seasonal labels, which are right here. And I used this die right here. I believe this is the one I used, yes and I cut it out on the cut and emboss machine again. It got to work out with this card. So now that I have it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, and I use the mini dimensionals to put this on. Just like so. And the thing is, is to make sure that you get it somewhat straight. I don't think I got that very straight at this end, but close enough. Okay, now we need to do the inside of the card. And what I did for the inside, I have my white card stock. I stamped it with a stamp from the Hope, it, Hope and Peace stamp set, which is on the same page as the Peace to You stamp set. And I used peace on earth, goodwill to all. And so I stamped it on here with the Blackberry Bliss ink. And I used my Stamparatus. And the great thing about this stamp, it doesn't have to be straight because it is not a straight stamp. So that was wonderful. I didn't have to worry about um, how it went because it is a clean stamp set and so sometimes it's just hard to get those the way you want them 
So this, this was perfect for me. And then I made it to decorate. And so for decorating it, I pulled out, being so I used the Marius um, hybrid, the Marius frames hybrid ones, I took out the Marius Moment stamp set. And what I did is I took the holly leaves with the holly. And I'm gonna show you what I did there. And let's see, I need a piece of paper because I don't think it's ink on my tabletop. I'll just fold this in half. And these are all left over from classes I have. I um, keep them after the class if they don't take them and then I use them for my stamping. Okay, I tried because I had some old gold ink that Stampin' Up um, had in the catalog probably about four years ago and I tried doing different things with the gold on here and I just did not like the way it looked. So I ended up getting out the shaded spruce because it is a dark green and it is very pretty and elegant looking and I felt that it kept the look the best. Now I could have heat embossed this, but I didn't want to. So I want this one leaning a little bit to the bottom right hand side, not straight up. And then I took, that was the largest holly leaf now this is the smallest one, and then the medium. Now I should have to get a better stamp because that first stamp didn't stamp as good as it should have. Um, I should have had this pad underneath it because these are the photopolymer stamps and they don't, um, oops, I didn't get tap very good on that one. And they like having some padding underneath. And now, stamp that one on. There we go. And I didn't want to use red for my holly because it just didn't want to introduce another color. So I brought out the Blackberry Bliss. And it's such a beautiful color. I'm all thumbs. And so here's my little berries, and I'm just going to stamp them right there. And that is how I decided to decorate the inside of my card. And I did the same thing for envelopes, too, down in the corner. And I had one. I mean it. I really did have one that was all stamped to show you guys. And it just walked right off my desk because I have no idea where it is. Oh, I'm sorry. And I mean, I don't see it anywhere in sight. So, and I don't have my envel envelopes handy. Hmm. Okay, that's embarrassing. I do apologize about that. But it looks just the same way on the envelope um, down in the lower hand corner. And I already have tape on here. So let's, I, my tear and tape, favorite adhesive for me. But I am getting better using the seal. It was just that um, I was never coordinated enough to use it. And that's why I didn't. And when I learned how to make cards, the club I belonged to, I lived in a Sun City Festival um, community, and it's what they used. And it's just how I learn, and we kind of sometimes stick with the way we learn. There we go. If you don't have a Stamping Up demonstrator, I have a generous rewards program. With every $25 increment of merchandise you buy from me, you get one rewards point. And after you get 10 rewards points, you get a $25 gift certificate to use in my um, store. And so it's... I feel that it's generous. You can earn rewards faster. And I would love to be your Stamping Up demonstrator. And if you're looking to sell dem 
Stampin' Up! or just be a hobbyist demonstrator, I would love to talk to you and have you join my team. Um, I have decided on the name Starlight Crafters, and um, I would love to have you join us. Okay, and here's my card. It's right here. And there's the inside. Just so pretty. And again, um, website directions on my website, stampinwithbonnylynn.com. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this card. Give it a thumbs up if you did, please. And leave a comment on if you think I should use any bling and what type. Thank you much and have a wonderful day. Bye.